What's up, Navigation Traders? Welcome to today's update. Today is the first day of the second quarter, Wednesday, April 1st, starting with today's Trade Hacker question of the day. Question is, if IV stays high, if implied volatility stays high through earnings season, will we still get the IV crush after the earnings announcements? Just to review, you know, implied volatility expands. Options get more and more expensive as we near a, a, a company's quarterly earnings announcement because of the uncertainty that surrounds that. And that's why we can benefit from sell, selling options for earnings plays, being net sellers of options for these earnings plays, is because we get this implied volatility crush right after the announcement. And so the question is, with implied volatility still high and, and so much uncertainty just in the global economic situation that we're in, Will we still get the IV crush after the earnings announcement? Let's go to the platform and take a look. I mentioned this yesterday, but uh, a, a company that just announced earnings a couple de days ago was Restoration Hardware, ticker RH. And so what you'll see here is obviously implied volatility has been pegged up here at 100, high 90s, uh, both the IV percentile, IV rank. And what you'll see here is after they made the announcement, we did get a little bit of implied volatility contraction, but definitely not the crush that you would typically see. And if I go to a, a yearly chart, I mean, here's, here's what I'm talking about. I mean, implied volatility gets up in the 90s, 100s, and then boom, just gets crushed. In this case, in the 80s, boom, gets crushed. In this case, in the 80s, boom, gets crushed. So those are the last three earnings announcements. And then this one, you know, we're up near 100 and got crushed a little bit. I wouldn't call it a crush, more just an IV contraction. But that's what we're likely to see with these upcoming earnings announcements here that are going to be starting here in a couple of weeks, is we're still going to get an IV crush to a point where a lot of the premium is going to get sucked out of those near-term options, especially if we're trading the options with you know one to four days to expiration within the same week of expiration. Uh, you know, those are those are going to get crushed because we're getting so close to expiration anyway. Uh, but some of the further dated options may not contract as much. So that's what we're expecting. Good question. Hopefully that is helpful as we start to come up on earnings season here in the next couple of weeks. So what's going on in the market today? Well, uh, S and P's down a cool hundy. Uh, we still got about over an hour and a half left in today's session at the time of this recording. Dow is down over 700. NASDAQ down to 60. Russell down 73. So what are some of the headlines going on today? What's what's potentially moving the market? Well, interestingly enough, um, you know, there is breaking news on one of the not to be mentioned uh, news media sites. The breaking news was According to U.S. intelligence, the reported numbers on the coronavirus in China are low. They're inaccurate. I mean, are you kidding? Is that really breaking news? Is it, is, does anyone actually believe anything China's government says? I mean, we're talking about you know a country that is just known for hiding data and, and misreporting to things to make themselves look good as a, as a government. Uh, I mean, I don't, I'm not sure why that was breaking news, but I guess it's just confirmed now is, is what the situation is. So all the, all the data and numbers that China has been reporting from the number of coronaviruses, from the number of deaths, completely inaccurate, completely low compared to what the actual, uh, data should be. Um, the other thing, and this was, I saw this yesterday, but according to some, some new projections, we are expected to see between 100,000 and 240,000 deaths in the, in the U.S. alone from this. I mean, that's trading aside. I mean, that that's just scary stuff, guys. Um, so, you know, gosh, I mean, that that's just, that's crazy. Um, but, and, and that's, you know, just kind of projecting out based on, you know, where the number of cases is today and what we're going to see kind of going forward over the next weeks, months, and, and so on. So, just, just a crazy, sad, sad thing. So if, uh, hopefully none of you all are affected or your families, but, um, you know, just a, just a sad deal. So, uh, you know, and that's that's part of why I just don't think this this market is done 
with the volatility. You know, when when you see that kind of impact and you see what that's going to do, not only from a health perspective, but the financial devastation that that's going to create for families, for businesses and everything else. Um, I mean, just, I mean, look out below guys. I mean, this thing's, this thing's going down now. We're not going to get crazy. We're not going to load the boat on short positions, but we're definitely going to be creating more and more short Delta positions here as we, as we have on this little ride up. So what did we do today? Well, we, we didn't do much. We're kind of letting on these last couple of days, letting these, these short Delta plays, uh, work for us as the market's going down. Uh, we did add one uh, iron duck in SPY, uh, and we're, we're just keeping very small. You know, even though our iron ducks have a big buffer to the downside, we've got all the way down to about here, and it's just about a week long trade. Uh, I mean, obviously, price could get there tomorrow. You know, so we don't we're not going crazy here, but we do want to start layering in some iron ducks on days that we have uh, on on days where the market's down, where implied volatility expanding. And when we, we, you know, we're trying to get our break evens as far away from the current price as possible. Obviously, if this thing does turn and things do, we do get some news on things turning for the better in regards to this virus. I mean, if this thing does rip up, we have no risk to the upside. In fact, we'll book some profits to the upside. So that's the cool thing about the duck. Uh, so that's that's really the only trade we did in our alerts portfolio. If we like uh, take a look at some of the stocks, I mean, obviously the stocks that are most susceptible to um, to the social distancing and, and lack of travel. I mean, casinos, you know, win down 10% today, big move down. We've got some short Delta in win. Uh, Delta Airlines, I was looking at earlier, it's having a big down day as well. Uh, let's see, where is it? DAL, you know, down 15%. I mean, these, uh, these, these stocks are just going to have a tough time. I mean, it's going to be a while before people are traveling again. Uh, banks getting hammered, uh, you know, Capital One Financial down 10%, uh, Citibank down almost 8%, a lot of, I mean, just a lot of red across the board here. Uh, a couple, a few things that are having good days, grocery stores, Kroger, uh, Walmart, Target, Procter and Gamble, you know, those are kind of the consumer staples, basically the essential businesses that are still open right now. Um, you know, they're, they're having a decent day, but everything else is pretty much in the red. So that's all I got for you. Everybody have a great evening and we'll talk to you tomorrow.